Hello, Michael. You are on, sir. Hey, Bart. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I'm the not-so-extraordinary Michael G. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a, are you a CLP sub? I don't, I don't remember. Off the top uh, of my head. I I was in the past. I'm not currently. So oh, I really boo, appreciate you taking my call. I know, I know, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> boo, boo, boo. All right, so you got a hand for us here. I do. So uh, we're playing out in Morongo, California, and yeah, we're going to play a uh, five, ten, twenty, three big blind game. Sometimes it's five, ten. 2040 but not in this hand and we're going to be 2500 effective which is fairly shallow so 510 20 2500 effective i didn't even realize that they played games that big over there in morongo yeah so that's maybe the only background for this hand that's particularly important like i don't know the villain or anything but when you have a casino where you know normally two five a thousand cap is the biggest game when you have like a 510 20 that's like hosted and built it's not just like a slightly harder game. It's much more aggressive. People actually show up specifically for this game. Yeah. So that might come up later in the hand. We'll I've see. actually never played here, funny enough, uh, at Morongo. I didn't really frequent the uh, the Indian casinos too much. I had played at Grayton up in um, Sonoma Valley or uh, by Napa, but never in LA, I, if you call this the LA area. So it's interesting. So yeah. When, I, when, we were, when we were first coming up, there was a 2 5 uncapped game that, were, that was great, but it hasn't been anything special in quite a long time. But this is a pretty good game here. Okay. So 5 10 20, 2500 effective. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have the villain in the cutoff who's going to go to 60, which is super standard. Okay. And the hero in the button, we're going to three bet with queen nine of hearts interesting pretty pretty light three bet there i mean it is cut off versus button so it's probably not quite as far out there but yeah so i think the cutoff you know can be light here and i don't think we're gonna have to show down winners all the time but yeah you can always you can definitely fold this but there, now, i went three bet here yeah you know, now the reasons though too because sometimes you know again it gets kind of an antiquated yeah i think people understand this notion now that you're not really supposed to three bet your worst playable hands those are actually supposed to be taken more in a in a call range where people were like, well, I'm going to three bet the worst playable hands. So I could actually even see this sometimes being called. However, though, as I've mentioned many, many times in my training videos, especially the ones I did out of Texas, the more blinds there are, the way more incentivized you are to three bet. So in a three bet, three blind structure like this, okay, fine, absolutely. Um, I would probably play button VPIP as, as a three better fold with three blinds um, next tech. So what size do you go to here? I go to 180. Okay, so hero to 180. Okay. And we're going to fold around back to our villain who calls. So your head's up. Correct. So the pot's like 180 and change or something, right? Probably. Well, three, 380 uh, yeah. and change. Yeah, so uh, with all the blinds, uh, I, I have it here at 395. So just under okay. 400 or take a flop. Okay. And our flop's going to be queen of clubs, mm -hmm. jack of diamonds, seven of hearts queen of clubs jack of diamonds seven of hearts by the way when you call in here i mean it's not i'm just asking people if they remember as i was telling my editor and you did this nicely the other michael g it's it's nice to actually say the flop in uh, order by high card it's actually easier for me when i'm doing this live so we get queen jack seven because i try to put it up that way so you flop a weak top pair here right with a backdoor heart draw Correct. And I expect Villain to be checking most of his range. I expect to be betting most of my range. And that's exactly what happens. He checks and I bet 175 here. So a little bit of an in-between sizing, I would say here. Usually this is going to be taken for one third, two thirds to pot. Um, we, we do see this a little bit reflective um, in a lot of live players are sort of comfortable with this sizing. I don't think it's something i mean I, I know my boy nate will disagree with me in the live chat uh, i think a lot of times a half pot sizing in live is somewhat equivalent to kind of a little bit of a smaller sizing here but speaking of of course the guy's going to check we're going to be doing a podcast i think next week about developing a donking rage sometimes in three bat pots but usually you don't see somebody donk especially on this board into so that's not surprising at all so you go 175 i think i would tend to go smaller to be honest with you i would probably would take that one third you've got the you know you've got the top pair there are some hands that can call you got the backdoor heart draw but you don't want to start piling money in so you might have got a little bit larger 
than I would have. But okay, so you go 175, okay. Yeah, good point. I actually wanted to be bet- betting smaller here. Like, I we want to keep in the jacks. We want to keep, if, you know, if somebody has 10s, 9s, 8s or something, we want to see calls here. So I definitely hate a big size. Uh, I agree with you. A little bit smaller here. Now, some, but- pe- some people saying, well, why, why not check it back? I actually like a bet here. Because I like a bet with any type, because I, th- I, I think you're going to be betting your back doors, you're going to be probably be doing a lot of betting with Ace King, Ace 10. Um, and you have top pair here too. So your chances are that you have the best hand and there's a lot that can call you. So you go 175. Okay. Yeah. And our villains go into call right. 175. Be- because you use that somewhat in between sort of not large sizing, but just larger sizing. You know, you do wonder how many streets of value you can really get. Like, th- this is very hard to get three streets across, especially it's not a super draw heavy board here, but you put in 350 here on the on the flop. So it looks like it's 745 here to the turn, right? Exactly. And you're, uh, you're getting ahead of the hand because that's going to be exactly the question here. Okay. But we'll go into the turn 745 in the pot, and we're going to see a queen of diamonds so just to uh, summarize we have queen jack seven queen now yep. two two diamonds yep. and importantly the jack is also a diamond so there aren't any jack x hands that are also diamond draws mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the villain checks here and i have to say i really don't like my play here i kind of bet reflexively and on the large size i bet 650 here uh, but this is my real first question in the hand what do you like here? Because I'm not, I don't really like my play. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't take that type of sizing. I don't think with what is basically um, weak trips. It's interesting because you could have some backdoor diamond types of um, types of hands here that you might be bluffing with. I got to be honest with you. I actually think that this might be a check back um, a fair amount of the time. Check back or bet one third. Here's the reason why, and people might not think, well, why would you check back when you make trips? I, even though, I think balance is a little bit overrated in live poker. I just have to think about like, what are you doing? You're playing 5, 10, 20. It's probably a fairly high stakes game. Like, what are you doing with a lot of other hands here? I mean, this is not like one, two, one, three, where we can sort of play off of always our hand. Like if you had aces, if you had kings, what would you be doing here? If you had ace king, if you had like king jack suited, would would you not be checking back here a lot? Uh, Yeah, so some of those... We, you know, like, let's say we have kings here. I'm probably checking this back almost always. I do want to be able to bet if I somehow have like a 10-9 or some diamond hand, I probably do want to be able to find some bets here. So I ended up justifying a bet. But even if I am going to bet, I like a smaller bet, like same logic as the flop. I want to keep keep in some of those weaker hands. We might just be keeping in hands that only beat us here with this bet. Yeah. I mean, I, again, like I said, I, I don't like your sizing. I think the question is, is that do you just bet on the one third size or do you check it back? And then that also goes back to the whole thing where because you used in between flop sizing here, now the villain has a little bit less that he's gotten here with, where if you had bet like 125, 150, and he calls and you check back turn, he's just going to end up with a lot of shit on the river that he's going to be bluffing with that he has to bluff with, especially when you check back turn here. It's just, although I will tell you a live hack though. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It, uh, you know, it's obviously less likely you have a queen. So Jack X is probably supposed to call down here, especially if you're checking back here with aces and kings quite a bit. Although I will say live, I don't know who the opponent is, but live players tend to overfold this spot a little bit, sort of defaulting to the fact that you're just betting again on a very, very scary card, as opposed to putting it together where there's less of a chance that you have a queen, if you know what I mean. Definitely agree. Okay, so what happens here? Uh, he did call, so our river is now at 2,045. 2,045, and you've put in about a thousand. Yeah. So there's mm-hmm. probably about 1,500 effective behind. Okay, so you got about three quarters of a pot size bet left here. Correct. Okay. All right, so the river is the eight of spades. So the board, just quickly summarizing, queen, jack, seven, queen, eight. The diamonds break out. The 10-9 gets there. Nothing else super interesting here. And our villain checks. Okay, so check. Now, I had said there was a the call that we put up today 
on the YouTube. I don't, and I'm sure this call will go up too, but of course we, you know, we record these from the live streams of the call. This is January 16th, the call we had put up, which a lot of people flamed the beginning because a preflop, a guy was in there with Jack five of diamonds, my buddy from Austin, it ended up being an interesting situation on the river where he bluff caught on a paired board. And I gave the example in that video and I'll link to it in this video too. I gave the example of how sometimes it is correct to check behind with trips, especially if your opponent has made an overly aggressive move like a check raise on flop or like he did when he check raised flop. Because if your opponent only has a draw or he's going to have better trips, then there's no point in betting. This is obviously a little bit different here, right? Because he could still be holding on with the jack. 9-10 comes in. When you take this sort of really large sizing here, I just don't know if we're going to really get the call like and then really is the question is like you know whether it's 750 for one third or all in i don't know if we're gonna get the call here really from a jack or say like pocket tens or you know what i mean something like that or i'm trying to think you can't have queen x of diamonds can't have jack x of diamonds you know, hero with like seven x of diamonds so i think as played because you took a ton of sizing here i probably check it back for those reasons and i am all for making thin value bets but that's my gut here yeah so you know when you have uh trips you think oh man how do i find value here but when i get here in this spot i i'm gonna say i probably need hands that continue i need to be like good let's say 55 percent of the time because maybe there's some crazy check raise all in sure. bluff mm -hmm. uh so maybe slightly above 50 percent, and i can't really find it like uh maybe some jacks look us up just because the queen pairs but is every jack 10 even gonna be there and are they gonna look us up like i just don't find the 55 percent. Mm -hmm. so i decide to check behind sounds like you agree with that here yeah unless you unless and again this is uh hero checks back unless because you only have three quarters of a pot size bet. And this is sort of a, a very artsy play, I would say, in poker. Sometimes you can actually... I, I, I was coming up with a list of CLP terms I'm going to be writing an article for. Let me try to put this. This is almost like... Oh, this is, a, this is a... It's not a reverse... Well, when I talk about a reverse block, I talk about blocking the river from up front with a strong hand to get raised as a bluff where your opponent would otherwise not really um, raise you're in position here so you'd almost look at it like a reverse it's like an induce basically you would be betting as an induce bet here because I, I just don't think that you can bet fold so unless there's some sort of history like that where you somehow think that if you were to bet like 400 here your opponent's going to jam but if you were to take that sizing i can't fold because i believe that you've induced it and you might not be comfortable really being put in that particular position um but there could could be some merit for betting very very small if your opponent thinks that he doesn't need to turn like a hand like a jack into a bluff or a pair something like that so i think it's probably a little bit closer on the surface you know if i had ace queen here i think it's a slam dunk king queen really becomes close because the queen and the jack is out there but with queen nine you've got you know all of the v pipping queens that are worse so you check behind and, and what's the result here yeah, so the villain tables aces. Wow. Yeah, and I it was not I didn't have it in his range at all. I mean, I assume that he wanted to get tricky on the turn and then it was an ugly turn for him. Uh the table thought I was super nitty. He kind of gave me a hard time, but still look and that's why I kind of wanted your thoughts here, but as played I just couldn't find a bet on the river, so I, think, I wanted to see what you thought. No, I think it's very close. I mean, I was, like this is kind of a, akin to sometimes when people like call in like these hard spots where they're faced with like you know an all-in shove, and we do the range equities, and I'm like, it's it's pretty close. I wouldn't leave, yeah, you know, wouldn't lose sleep over it. I think this is sort of the same thing here. It's pretty. I mean, it's not the same thing. You're not facing a shove, but I think it's it's actually pretty close. But what sort of lends me to kind of want to check back is your large sizing on the turn. Like if you had gone even 175, one third or check back turn, of course, of course, you know, you're gonna, of course, gonna um, bat the river if to check to. What's interesting here is that if you check back the turn, I don't know what kind of player the villain is. I know the eight is a little bit of a sticky card. 
if it wasn't an eight, I would expect aces to bet from up front after it goes bet and then check, check. Cause what is he really losing to? You know what I'm saying? Not much. I don't know if you would have done that with an eight, if he would have blocked and you probably would have just called. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of close. I mean, everybody on the table can say, Oh, what a net, what a net when like a hundred percent of them would check back there, you know, at the end. So. Yeah, and I had information on how aggressive this villain becomes, but I did not have it at the time of this hand, so I just don't think it's helpful to share it here. He was I played one orbit with him at the time, so I just can't make a read like that at people, the time. People saying that people trap aces so often and get married to them at my home casino, oh Ben Stike. Yeah, I don't really see that as much these days, but that of course that's a great situation if you're ever in that. But thanks for the call, Mike G. The other Mike so G. <laughs> I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right.